okay the investigations of acute kidney injury actually there is no single thing that can tell you that you have an acute kidney injury okay so the investigations are not just to diagnose the acute kidney injury it's further to know if we have any life-threatening emergencies in acute kidney injury to know if we have any complication of acute kidney injury and to look for the cause of acute kidney injury okay so there is no simple thing you have to suspect by the clinical findings for example patient will come to you with anuria or oligouria okay for some time okay or uh, something else okay and you have to confirm by biochemical uh, investigations you have to do creatinine of course you remember in the definition we have uh, the creatinine so serum creatinine is very important okay so first of all you have to start with the very important thing the life-threatening emergencies you can't go to look for the underlying cause for the acute kidney injury without checking out if you have any life-threatening emergencies as a complication of acute kidney injury so investigate the life-threatening emergencies hyperkalemia very important life-threatening emergency when do we call it hyperkalemia when we have more than 6.5 milli equivalent per liter potassium okay or if we have less six, uh, than 6.5 milli equivalent uh, per liter uh, potassium but we have ecg abnormalities this is when we call the hyperkalemia hyperkalemia okay like what ecg abnormalities like tall peaked t waves and other ECG abnormalities. So the electrolyte imbalance uh, are very important life-threatening emergencies in acute kidney injury and the most important one of them is the hyperkalemia because of the effect of the so potassium on the blood. Okay, what other electrolyte uh, abnormalities we may have we may have hypo or hypernatremia we may have metabolic acidosis so you have to check out the sodium the potassium metabolic acidosis ph okay we may have also hypocalcemia so please 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 check out these things before start investigating the causes of the uh, acute kidney injury so the electrolyte imbalance the potassium we will have hyperkalemia the sodium we may have hyper or hyponatremia the catch we will have hypocalcemia we will have metabolic acidosis okay okay and shock okay i told you that in the acute kidney injury you may have decrease in the volume of the blood and that will lead to shock or you may have increase or overload of the volume that will lead to pulmonary edema and hypertension and all of these are life-threatening conditions the pulmonary edema or physical examination please do a respiratory examination to know if there is any pulmonary edema okay choke signs of dehydration and so on so this is the first important thing to investigate acute kidney injury the life-threatening emergencies remember categorize them into three things the electrolyte potassium sodium the calcium okay and the fluid overload like hypertension pulmonary edema fluid underload the shock after that you can test to have a specific diagnosis do cpc to know if there is any anemia okay you take blood chemistry again to know you have hyperkalemia the hypocalcemia hypo or hypernatremia the kidney function test of course to know the degree of injury the creatinine how uh, uh, the levels of creatine blood gases okay chest x-ray very important to know if we have a pulmonary edema again even the further investigations of acute kidney injury targets the life-threatening conditions to know how does it uh, did it progress okay the chest x-ray to know if the pulmonary edema if we have a previous infection okay urine analysis urine analysis to know uh, how much the sodium is in urine and i'm going to tell you uh, talk uh, more about that when i talk about the uh, how to differentiate between pre-renal and renal acute kidney injury stool culture and sensitivity why 
to know if we have hemolytic curamic syndrome renal ultrasound very important especially in the post renal post renal acute kidney injury renal ultrasound is a must to know if we have a post renal cause like stone tumor trauma congenital anomaly and so on okay also mri mcug ct scan you can check the antibodies uh, anti-nuclear antibody the anca the all these things to know if you have a vasculitis if you have autoimmune diseases okay so you can check whatever you want these things very important okay i know they are much but an uh, acute kidney injury is serious condition you have to check them all okay and the developed world now we have world we have now we have bio uh, biomarkers for acute kidney injury i told you that it is a suspicion by clinical urine output and the creatinine but creatinine sometimes uh, take uh, takes some time uh, to uh, to uh, increase so in the developed world they develop the biomarkers for acute kidney injury like ngal the neutrophil creatinine associated lipoclean okay interleukin 18 okay the chem one the kidney injury molecule one uh, cyst, uh, cystatine, cystatine c okay so all these are biomarkers to tell you that you have an acute kidney injury and they are early biomarkers so very important but uh, unfortunately in the developing countries they still do not have these things okay now the very important subject how to distinguish the pre-renal from the renal causes of acute kidney injury this is very important i need all your attention now okay how to distinguish between pre-renal and renal causes of acute kidney injury okay we have three or four ways to distinguish we have the urine sodium the urine osmolality and bun on na ratio okay blood urine nitrogen na let's start with the urine sodium urine sodium the blood will carry the sodium to the glomerulus by the efferent arteriole and this is the efferent arteriole okay so the uh, sodium will infiltrate into the glomerulus and then into tubules okay and in the tubules especially in the proximal tubules part of the sodium will be absorbed will be reabsorbed okay sodium will be reabsorbed okay and uh, the rest will go into where the toilet into the urine into the urine okay in the cases of pre renal acute kidney injury what we really have in pre renal kidney injury that the sodium will go here okay but in prenatal kidney injury we have less glomerular filtration rate okay glomerular filtration rate will decrease in prerenal kidney injury okay so we will have less sodium filtration less sodium filtration in the tubules okay and less urine output of sodium the sodium in urine will decrease because we have decreased in glomerular filtration rate okay but still we have some reabsorption of sodium reabsorption of sodium okay this is in pre renal but what about the renal causes in renal acute kidney injury we have no absorption no absorption okay because we have a tubular damage the absorption will be less and that will lead to what S the sodium uh, filtrate okay by the glomerulus and then it should be absorbed here and go to the urine in the renal kidney injury we have no absorption so we will have more sodium more sodium in urine than in the pre renal causes because in a pre renal kidney injury we have some absorption of sodium so it will have less sodium less sodium in a pre, in a pre 
renal but in renal we have more sodium so uh, sodium in urine of course okay so this is what we uh, talking about the urine sodium in pre-renal causes what's the sodium will be it will be less sodium less than what than in intrinsic because in intrinsic renal insult we will have less absorption and we will have more sodium in the urine so it will be less than 10 in pre-renal failure in renal failure it will be more than 50 okay more than 50 this is for children for neonate it will be less than 20 okay we have more sodium in uh, urine but it will be less than 20 in neonate and more than 40 in renal causes so again the concept is in pre-renal failure we have more sodium in less sodium in, i'm sorry in pre-renal causes we have less sodium in urine because we have uh, we have absorption of sodium okay so we have less urine but in renal causes the absorption is impaired so we will have more sodium in urine okay in neonate will, it will be more than 40 in uh, in renal in pre-renal it will be less than 20 so this is the first thing to distinguish the urine sodium oh, oh i'm sorry to distinguish the pre-renal and renal uh, kidney injury the second thing is the urine osmolality okay again this is the afferent arteriole this is the glomerulus the efferent arteriole the bowman capsule okay the uh, tubule the proximal and distal and the collecting this is the toilet okay so if we have sodium will go there okay and it will be infiltrate into the proximal uh, distal tubule and in the toilet if we have a pre-renal failure pre-renal failure the glomerular filtration rate will decrease right okay so the sodium going to the tubules will be less sodium in the tubules okay but still it will be absorbed okay when the sodium absorbed okay it is right th that the uh, some of the things that add to the osmolality of the urine will go okay but th the uh, what really happens that when sodium go the h2o will follow it the h2o will follow it in higher rates than the sodium okay so the h2o in urine will decrease will have much more decreasing than the sodium decreasing okay so h2o is decreasing prominently then you will have what increase in the osmolality osmolality will increase okay this is in a pre-renal failure but in renal failure we have no absorption so the sodium will stay in the urine and also the h2o the water will stay in urine and the presence of water in the urine will what will decrease the osmolality will decrease the osmolality and this is in what in renal renal failure intrinsic renal failure we have no absorption okay no absorption means uh, no sodium absorption means no water absorption and that will lead to accumulation of water in the urine and that will lead to decrease osmolality decrease osmolality in renal failure in a pre-renal failure we have uh, we have an absorption the absorption will lead to water the sodium absorption will lead to water absorption so the urine will lose a lot of water more than sodium loss okay and that will lead to what increase osmolality in a pre-renal failure okay so the osmolality will be more than 500 in a pre-renal failure more than one 500 this is for children 
okay and it will be less than 300 in renal failure it will be less than 300 in renal failure because we have less absorption and we have a lot of water in fluid uh, in urine and that will lead to decrease osmolality less than 300 and more than 500 in pre-renal causes okay in units it, more than 400 and less than 400 so please the important thing to understand when does the osmolality increase and when does it decrease and the numbers come after that you can just uh, understand then talk about the numbers okay so this is the second thing to distinguish the pre-renal and the renal okay uh, kidney injury the third thing is about the uh, blood urine nitrogen and sodium okay the BUN is something that we detect in a blood okay so let's assume again this is the glomerulus uh, okay so this is the proximal and the distal convoluted tubule okay loop if and so on okay so we have the afferent glomerulus the efferent tubule okay so the BUN should be infiltrated in a blood okay to the kidney and after that it also will be absorbed uh, from the uh, proximal tubules in the case of a pre-renal kidney injury okay we have decrease in the glomerular filtration rate okay and that will lead to accumulation of BUN in a blood okay but we have a, a, a uh, an absorption of the BUN uh, from the proximal tubule. This is in pre-renal kidney injury. Okay, so the BUN will it will increase in a blood due to two causes: the decrease in a glomerular filtration rate. This is the first one, and the second cause is the absorption of BUN uh, from the tubules. So it will high it will be high due to will accumulate in blood due to two causes okay the first one is the decrease in the glomerular filtration rate accumulation of UN in blood and the absorption in the proximal tubules and uh, this is the second cause of increasing UN in blood this is in what? in a pre-renal pre-renal kidney injury in renal kidney injury the absorption is not there okay we have no absorption because the tubules are destructed again okay so we have decrease in the glomerular filtration rate and the decrease in the glomerular filtration rate will increase the BUN this is the first cause of increasing of BUN but we have no absorption no absorption of BUN okay no absorption of BUN and that will lead to what the we have we don't have the other cause of increasing BUN in blood so this is in renal renal uh, acute kidney injury so in pre-renal kidney injury we have more increase in BUN in blood but in renal kidney injury we have less increase in BUN in both we have increased BUN because we have decrease in glomerular filtration rate but in pre-renal cause we have more BUN because, because we have absorption of the BUN but in renal cause we have no absorption of BUN okay so okay in the distinctive thing that in the pre-renal causes we have more increased BUN than in renal causes of acute kidney injury so please remember these things the urine sodium the urine osmolality and BUN over sodium I think you should uh, think about them to understand them clearly uh, think about them a lot of times and then they will uh, you will remember them as a grant okay the management of acute kidney injury I'm actually I'm going to talk about this in the next video thank you very much